I recently had the opportunity, and I must say thrill, to speak to Colonel Doug Hurley, who is a NASA astronaut who, you may remember, went up in the Dragon spacecraft to the space station not too long ago. He's also flown twice in the shuttle. Fascinating person. Uh, lovely to speak to him. We had a good long chat about his life in astronautics, as if that's the right word, uh, as, a, as an airline pilot and also his love of Manchester City because he is genuinely a Manchester City supporter. I did a long, long interview with him, well over an hour and a half, and this is just a little flavour of that interview. There will be a lot more for you to watch in, in the coming days and weeks. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, so let's begin with how he started his career and how he got into being an astronaut. The, the short answer is, you know, I grew up in a very, very small town called Appalachian in upstate New York in the Northeast United States. Uh, very much a rural um, existence, a uh, very small town. And, uh, you know, spent a lot of time outdoors, just uh, I, what I would consider a pretty normal childhood. Um, my father worked uh, for uh, an, uh, as an engineer uh, for a large company, and my mother was a homemaker, and, uh, and I have one brother. And, uh, you know, I think uh, where, where my interest in space started fairly early, I certainly was not the, the, the astronaut that thought from day one, you know, as a very young, young child, that that's what I wanted to do but I was very interested in space. I was very interested in airplanes. Probably that was my biggest fascination, albeit I never flew one until um, when, uh, during my university time. And I can explain that a little bit more maybe later, but uh, yeah, I just was very interested in space and science fiction and um, airplanes. And as I got older, um, and I was getting to the point where it was time to start thinking about going to university. Uh, you know, there's some, certainly a lot of families have the challenges of, okay, we want, we want our, our, our children to go to university, but it's, it's, it's expensive you know, as I'm sure it is in England and most places. So um, one opportunity was the, was the, with the U S military was a, a what they call an ROTC scholarship. And I was lucky enough to, to uh, was awarded one of those and was able to go to university on a military scholarship. But what that involves is some military service once you graduate from the university. And so that's kind of how um, it led me that that path was kind of somewhat out of necessity, but also somewhat out of, you know, a possibility of pursuing a career where I could actually fly the airplanes. I, I thought that was something that would be uh, something that, that would be very exciting to do and um, and gave you the opportunity to to pay for for college and then uh, and then you know in some cases to see a little bit more of the world than I'd seen in upstate New York and uh, and and just see how it say how it went. It wasn't such a long commitment that it felt like it would have been daunting to a young person, but uh, you know when you when you have to pay back in years the the time you know, for, for the military paying for school, it, it certainly is something that goes into that decision, but that's kind of what led me at least into the military and into the, into the, into the field of uh, flying airplanes. And then I think from there, you know, once I uh, graduated from the university, then you're commissioned, what they call commissioned into the United States military as an officer. So I was a second Lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. And then, um, after some uh, schooling in uh, Virginia that all Marine Corps officers go through before they go into their specific career fields within the Marines, um, I went down to Pensacola, Florida and started uh, the journey through uh, Naval Flight School and, and was lucky enough to get into the, into the jet pipeline and then was, uh, was able to select F-18s as my first aircraft to fly as a as a Marine Corps pilot. So when I take you back to your childhood again at the, uh, earlier, uh, sure. in England, I think you'd have been described as a nerd. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you, would you, do you, were you treated as that? Was that a, an expression that was because you were so fascinated and so focused, it sounds like, on, on these passions that you had? It's a passion, isn't it? 
Yeah. Oh, it certainly is. I think, I, I think for me, that's probably one of the biggest lessons learned in life. If you're, if you're passionate about something, you're certainly going to do a better job. Um, I, I think I'm certain that probably was the case. You would have to ask some of my friends and, uh, you know, uh, folks that I went to, to, to school with um, growing up. But I, but I also played um, sports uh, constantly. Um, I played, uh, I, I loved baseball. I loved uh, American football. And then I was lucky enough to play uh, football or soccer, as we called it back then here, um, as well and and just loved being a, a member of a team and, and so maybe that took the nerdy edge off of me to some degree because i was a i was uh i, I certainly wouldn't uh, describe myself as a as a as an athlete per se but I, I i did okay and uh was lucky enough and i think this helped me in the marines um i was a team captain on all of those teams uh in my you know, kind of my last four years of, uh, of what we would call high school. So your last, before you go to university. Um, and, and I think that was uh, to, to be a part of a team. And then, you know, especially with soccer or football, um, I, I just, it, it was something that, you know, for me as a child, that was later in life as a child, unlike in England, where I think people are born, uh, you know, they're in the crib with the soccer uh, uh, football. So it's, it's, uh, and, and, and then part of that, uh, love for that game, I think came from uh, a very close friend of mine. He still is a very close friend. He, um, came over, his family came over from England when, uh, we were in, I want to say eighth grade or eighth grade. So we go, uh, kindergarten, first grade, and then through to 12th grade is our, is our local school. And then we go to university potentially. And, and he was also a, uh, he was a, a huge, and I remember this distinctly, he was a huge Nottingham Forest fan and cause he grew up around there. And of course, I think back then, correct me if I'm wrong, but they were a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good team in the eighties uh, and, and in, even into the nineties. But anyway, and of course he was, by far the best football player we had. And we centered the team around him. And, uh, and it was just a joy to watch him. And we learned so much from him. And we actually did pretty well, even though it was the first teams that we had for my high school. Um, but I really enjoyed playing it. But I think being a team captain in all those was, was very valuable to me. And it maybe took that nerd edge off of my, <laughs> off of my title uh, to some degree. My first visit to the States was back in 1979. And at that time, New York Cosmos were huge. Uh, Franz yep. Beckenbauer, Pele. You're probably aware of Rodney Marsh, who these days is on Sirius in the States. Oh, I loved, loved to listen to him. Yeah. And I love to hear the bumbits. stories because, because I remember, you know, remember hearing about that. And it was so new uh, in the States. And, 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 you know, I certainly back then did not have an appreciation for how huge those those athletes were and those stars. They were mega stars, and uh, you know, uh, New York Cosmos was lucky to have them. And and it and it was probably neat for those for those guys to have you know prolong their careers a little bit and still be able to play. And and um, you know, and it's neat to see now. I think you see a lot of excitement. I, I remember going to a. Uh, a Houston Dynamo game where uh, Ibrahimovic was playing uh, when he played for Galaxy, I believe, wasn't it? Wasn't it Galaxy? And it was yeah. just neat to actually see him on the field. And and my son and I, Jack and I, had seen him play for United uh, the year before or two years before. I can't remember on one of our trips uh, over to Manchester. So um, yeah, he. It, it's just fun to see those guys because the the talent. Um, you know, I think the talent in the United States is getting better, but the European talent, I think it's just, well, maybe not just purely European, but the talent that is played in the European leagues is just, it's just amazing. And the speed is just amazing. Uh, and I think that's where you see the, the, the differences is the speed of the game and the talent that, that the, you know, the, especially those four or five really large leagues over in Europe. It's just, it's just amazing, but it was fun to see him play here. So I can't imagine what it was like to go see the Cosmos play in the, in the seventies and eighties. 60,000 at the, uh, at the giant stadium as it was. That's, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen city now play at the new stadium as well. They were there a couple of years ago in preseason, 
Um, I'm interested then to know how your passion, your family passion perhaps, for City comes about. What made you latch on to, to City? Is there something in your history? Is it, was it the Aguero goal? When did the uh, City I, moment happen for you? hope you enjoyed that first little flavour of my interview with Colonel Doug Hurley, the NASA astronaut and Manchester City fan. And if you want to know how he became a City fan, why is he a City fan, what it's like flying the space shuttle, what it's like in the space station, what it was like to go up in Dragon and so much more, then keep watching this channel to see the next few parts of this interview, which was uh, I really enjoyed doing and really something that I hope you're enjoying as much as I am. Uh, if you are a company or an individual who'd like to sponsor and support this channel, then get in contact and you can have your brand or your charity at the end or the beginning of these videos with Colonel Doug Hurley and the uh, vlogs coming up for the rest of the season. In the meantime, remember, it's great being a blue, isn't it? Big thanks to the season-long supporter of the Forever Blue podcast, charleslewy.co.uk, Chartered Mortgage Advisors. Thanks, guys.